everybody, Derek here, and in this video we're going to be going over how to use the Ubuntu Minimal Installer to build your own Ubuntu installation. So to start off, I am doing this in a virtual machine because I kind of have to. If I don't, uh, you can't really record the output of the machine. So let's start up. And uh, when you put the ISO on your flash drive and you boot it into your computer, this is exactly what you'll see. You need to press enter on the install button. From there, it'll go through and it'll do the boot process. So the first step is to select your language. I speak English and I live in the United States, so that's what I'll do. If you need to use a different keyboard layout than what is normally there, you can configure it. I'm gonna leave it as it is, so I'm gonna select no. And of course, once again, I'm an American, I speak English, so I'm going to leave that there. And uh, from here, it's gonna go through and detect my network hardware. And this is because everything is gonna be downloaded from the internet. It's not going to be using anything from the disk. This ISO was actually only 57 megabytes, which is pretty nice. This makes it super convenient to put on anything really. So the first real step to setting it up is to set up a host name. So my host name is going to be a test uh, host name because this is just a VM. But keep in mind that this is what is going to be showing up in on the network. And if you don't know what a host name is, let me open up my terminal. This is a host name. And this is the identifier that other Linux computers will see on my system. And more importantly, other net computers, regardless of the operating system, will see that name right there. So name it something good. I'm going to do test Ubuntu. Once I do that, I'll once again need to select my country. And uh, if you have a proxy that you need to fill out, add it there. Otherwise, press enter. This will go through and it will grab the base installation components. And this is so that we can select the software that we need to grab. So from here, you need to enter your full name. Now this is so that the login manager knows who you are. In my case, my name is, my full name is Derek Diner. And uh, this will generate a username based on my full name and it will generate Derek, which is what I normally use. And then I just need to enter the password of my new user and enter it twice to verify it and then I can configure my encryption settings. I'm gonna say no because I don't use that feature, but if you need this feature, you can click yes. Then it will set up the clock and it'll go through and uh, this may take a couple seconds. It will ask me what my location is. So I am in the state of Michigan. I am in the uh, Detroit area. So it's going to ask me uh, you know, is this my time zone, Eastern time? So I'm gonna say yes. Then it will go through and it'll detect my hardware. More importantly, my hard drives, which is where Ubuntu is going to be installed. So for most users, if you're doing an Ubuntu minimal installation, chances are you're not gonna be dual booting Windows. There doesn't really make any sense as to why you'd be doing that. So the best option for everybody is to just select guided. If you need to do LVM, you can select LVM. You can select encrypted LVM if you want that. If you want to do a manual partition method, select that. But for most users, select the top one and then select your hard drive and then click yes to write the changes. It's going to grab the packages and uh, install everything. from the base system. It hasn't actually built the desktop or the release of Ubuntu yet. We're only grabbing the core components and installing the base components of what makes Ubuntu an operating system. So if we were to just do this and not pick any of the other software components, we would just be grabbing and we'd, we'd be loading into a terminal. There'd be nothing there at all.
So after the base system has installed to the machine, you need to configure automatic updates. So automatic updates is, uh, as it explains here, can be useful. I don't want automatic updates, but if you do, select this option here. I'm going to select no. So then it will install a couple more pieces of software and continue on. So this is the part that we've all been waiting for. This is the grand customization section. So if you want to set up a server, you can press the space bar and select a LAMP server and not select any desktop environments at all. You can set up a mail server, Postgres, SQL, print server, Samba, Tomcat, audio recording and editing, everything. I am going to go through and select Lubuntu desktop. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to do, yes, let's do Lubuntu desktop. And I'm also going to add OpenSSH for the heck of it. But you can go through, you can select Kubuntu, you can select Ubuntu Cloud, you can select uh, Ubuntu Budgie, Ubuntu Mate, Desktop USB, Studio. The sky's the limit, guys. But for the sake of time, I'm going to just select Ubuntu Desktop and continue. So it's going to download all these packages and install them, and this could take a while. Once all of the software finishes installing, the last step in the installation process, at least, is to install the Grub bootloader to the hard drive. If you boot this ISO in UEFI mode through your BIOS, it will install the UEFI version of the bootloader. If you install it in Grub, if you install it in BIOS mode, like I have, you'll be installing it just in regular MBR mode. So to get this going, just click yes, and uh, it will do the grub install on the hard drive that Ubuntu was installed on. It may take a little bit. Once it does that, it'll finish up the installation by asking you to set your time. And you just do that, and then click the continue button to finish it up. So now the installation is finished, the machine has, has booted. Now what I need to do is remove the the disk from the hard drive and then just do a reboot again and as this loads we will see our Ubuntu our Lubuntu desktop installation and this will load up just like any other normal Ubuntu installation except we will have had the ability to select as many things as we'd like in the installation I chose Lubuntu so as you can see this is loading up this is actually a really good way to install Ubuntu because you can choose the version that you want. All you need to do is burn the mini. So if you're if you're installing on a laptop, maybe you need Lubuntu, you can do it that way. If you need uh, Kubuntu on something else, you can select it through the installation and you don't have to burn a bunch of different ISOs. And we can maximize this and log in. And this should be just, you know, just regular Ubuntu. And as you can see, it indeed is. So guys, this is how to customize Ubuntu with the Ubuntu Minimal ISO. It's a long and arduous process, as you can see by the video, but it's worth it ultimately because it gives you the ultimate control when installing Ubuntu. This is, but that's gonna be all for me today and I will see you next time.